welcome to the Baller Show podcast, available everywhere you get your podcast. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share our YouTube page at Ball Alert TV. Uh, one time for Revo. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. I go by the name, you know, BT. OCT, what up? Little Duval in the building. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, big dog, you all right? You just woke yeah, up? Yeah, man. Nah, it's just funny <laughs> no, just doing this. No, he's just up. high. I am high. I am high. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it, I supposed to been did this, but now I'm here. Yeah, you nah, finally yeah. here. Yeah, I was supposed to been did it, but I'm here. Because we don't want to really wild out. I really want to tell, we really want to tell the little Duval story. Okay. I that's go, how people come here, you know, yeah, you get to know our ballers, man. 25 years in the game. Yeah, this is my 25th year. How y'all know? Yeah, I know. Hey, 25 I just, years in the game. I know, I know all about you, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing I'm from the crib. 25 years. Yeah, he from Florida. I know. I was, that's why I would have did it for him, but I don't do podcasts or so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm 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 here now though, so come on, let's talk. Let's go. All right, let's take it back to Jacksonville. <laughs> Can we take it back to Jacksonville? Who was Lil Duval growing up? My parents was more so I was a village. So it wasn't just my parents, it was my family, it was mm-hmm. my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I'm a product of my environment in a good way. You know, you know, we get here everything bad by Jacksonville, but I'm one of the good things. Yeah, I told, but, I heard know, it was two sides. Of uh, uh, Jacksonville, when I when I went one time, they was like, "Yo, you cross the bridge, you gonna be on." Now the bridge, cross the bridge, kind of rough now too. But it's like it is two sides. <laughs> there's, there's the college white boy side that they party like a motherfucker. Then you got us, the niggas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, it's both, and both of them good. You just gotta understand both of them. Yeah, so, I want to go get the good I food. So both. They told yeah. me to go on the other side. They like, you want to get the good food? You gotta go over there. But to the north side, I be mean, safe. we got the good side. I mean, even on the north side, nah, the good food on the north side on the hood. Yeah, the hood. So if you want some good food, come to the hood. Did you ever explore like music? Because I know you do the music now, and I, I actually love how you. It all was music. organic. It was all organic. Did you ever the, have a, a rapper phase where you was like, I want to be a rapper? Oh no. I, I mean, I he was had pop. The hair. Like I was. <laughs> When yeah, <laughs> I, I'm trying. You gotta think when hip hop came around, it came around around the town when I was a kid. So yeah. it was like everybody would like no. We had a rap in our neighborhood, which was my homeboy. So I went over his house and we used to listen to rap and we used to record stuff. But it was just like fun stuff. It wasn't like this is what you're gonna do to be famous. Like the only thing I just knew I was gonna be an entertainer. I just didn't know how. So whatever was working, and the thing that worked the most was. I was funny, you know. So I was entertaining. So I just went with that, and that's that's where it went. But who told who told you, like, man, you funny, man? You should really take this serious. Nobody really. It was like a. Uh, Did you like? Was you like the 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 funny the person that was funny that joned on people, cracked on people? Yeah, all the time? I always cracked. Like, so they didn't, oh, didn't want to okay. Honestly, you. I was really the bully. Out of like it was big. I was the littlest person, but I was the bully when it came to ranking. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, Joan and what y'all call it? Ranking, so, Joan yeah, and yeah. ranking. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. So, like, ranking all that. when I was in the when I was in the room, I used to rank on everybody. So that came organic for me. And then when I moved to Atlanta, my man, he used to be he used to be with uh, Hindu Entertainment, which Coach K. That's Coach K was probably the first person I met that was in the industry when I first moved here. Cause he was he uh, my man was signed to them who Hindu who um, Coach K worked for, and he the one the the guy. Matter of fact, it's it's funny how life worked because the guy that put me on he a, he like a crackhead now on my street right now. Oh lord! Oh, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying like sometimes that one person can change your like that might be the only purpose in life. That mm. little that little That's part real. of the ecosystem switch you over to make you who you is so I guess in a way if it wasn't for him I probably wouldn't because he the one told me to like man let's go up here to the comedy club you know what I'm saying and and I went up to the comedy club I think I went to Chris Tucker but I didn't go up and then the next time I went up so I'm saying like just just that little thing there he he he, he kind of instilled that in me now that I'm thinking back but, Sparks up menu. Yeah, I mean, he one made me actually like, man, you could do that because he was like the man when I came up too. Like mm. he was, I was the man in high school. He was the man in high school. Mm. So when he left, he went to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Then, then as soon as when I got in twelve, my first thing was like, I get, I got to get out of Jacksonville. So now that I'm thinking, maybe just me seeing like him do it, I did it. And then when I met, got here, you know, when you get here, you meet whoever you know. Mm-hmm. I saw him. You know what I'm saying? So. I clicked up with him and... Are you Lil Duval yet? 
No, I didn't become Lil so Duval. So what's your too. name then? I'm what's rolling. You know, you're rolling. rolling. Okay. Rolling. No, actually, I'm the nigga from Florida. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's how it was. Like everybody from Florida linked up when we first moved to okay. Atlanta. Yeah. Like you knew Florida was like when you know you know a Florida, Florida nigga. together. Yeah, yeah. Right. this was like in the '90s. Like this was mm-hmm. I moved in '96. Okay. So during the Freak Olympics, Nick. during the Olympics, like yeah, okay, yeah. Freak Nick was dying off, dying off a little but bit. Okay. the Olympics at first, that's when the Olympics was here. So I had moved at that time. So we all clicked up. Our, everybody from Florida clicked up. And I didn't start doing comedy till like 99. Wow. Okay. So, what was that first time on stage like? No, no, hosting. He gave me the mic. Rest in peace. He he gave me the mic. And I think if I wouldn't have got a laugh, I probably wouldn't have did it. Mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't be doing that. I, once like I got, nobody laughed, you would have just been if like, I would have got booed this. that night. I probably wouldn't have did it. So mm. it was all... Did you have like a, a show prepped or you just went up there and I just... went up there. I had one joke. I had one joke. I was like, <laughs> try this joke. I think I said something about... Um, they say black people will uh, make things out of nothing. I said, I think it's Mexicans. Get anybody that could take a two or Toyota to sale and turn it to a pickup truck. That's, <laughs> so that's what the, my joke was. And mm-hmm. that worked. That's the only thing I remember off that. And then from that, I had another joke. And everybody knew me from one joke, one joke rolling. <laughs> no, I had a joke about t-shirts I was like and if, I was like man I'm selling these t-shirts it was a blank t-shirt I used to say they cost $50 back then ain't nobody paying no fucking $50 for t-shirts so right. that shit used to rip so it, those was my jokes and I they just spilled from there and I just kept going kept going kept going and I started incorporating my comedy with music because I always was like a hip hop a comedian so I just intertwined in, into one and it was just always me and then yeah, I am. How did that lead you to Cedric the Entertainer giving you a shot? That was, um, I was in, I did that um, thing in Oakland. It was some type of competition out there. And I didn't win, but I, the, one of the guys, the man, his uh, road manager, uh, shit, man, don't, don't get mad at me for forgetting your name, bro. <laughs> T.C. KC, <laughs> shit, I forgot his name. But he, he saw me, he was like, hey, man, um, Cedric going on the road and he taking up and coming comedians on the road and I think you'd be good. So he took me on the road. Are you Lil Duval yet? No. You still rolling? You still, still rolling. rolling. I didn't become Lil Duval until I did coming to the stage. And the only reason I did that was because I got tired of repping my city by mm-hmm. saying, like, sometimes, now that I got tired, it was like, it was hard for me to sometimes just say, I'm from Jacksonville, I'm from oh, Duval. Oh, you, want, you wanted to... You... I, yeah, so now it was like, you couldn't help but know I'm from Duval by saying my name, because everywhere I went in Florida, like, I was already popular before I got on comp- I mean, uh, coming to the stage, because mm-hmm. I had, from doing Cedric and doing Comic View, so I was the man in Florida. Yeah. So everywhere I went in Florida, it was like, that's Lil Duval, because yeah. they knew me from Duval. So I was like, damn, they know me from now. I'm finna call myself Duval all over the world. That way yeah. I ain't even got to, I'm still repping my crib and I'm still saying, because like if you listen to my first shit, I used to always say Duval at the end of the every show. Mm-hmm. So now I ain't have to say it no more. Soon as they said, so I knew what I identified from not just from Jacksonville, from people from Florida, mm-hmm. they knew off then, that's ins- inspiration. Damn, this nigga here from where I'm from. So I already, I had already in- implemented in my, so when I did come to the stage, I knew, I was like, I'm gonna call myself Duval, Duval. from now on. Lil Duval from now on, that's where it came from. Was you, uh, question, I always wanted this, was, was you on coming to the stage when Lil JJ was on there? Nope, but that's, that goes back to that, the Mandela effect. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? What's the Mandela effect? Where they say you think you remember something, but you really don't. Like everybody right now <laughs> think they saw me with Lil JJ, but Lil JJ was on the, the season before me, and he won, mm. and I was on the season afterwards. See everybody? Why does everybody think? think because that? y'all slow. Humans are slow. <laughs> <laughs> Humans really are slow, so they don't realize that, but they think they do. And social media don't make it no better. So you thinking you you doing something, but you really don't. You really don't know yourself. Mm. When did you meet T.I.? Uh, like, probably, shit. I don't know. When did, when did, um. You were definitely a little Duval. When did I'm serious You was in all the videos. Yeah, I was, <laughs> that had to be 2001, 2002. Yeah, right before, because I'm um, serious came out. He wasn't like popping, popping, but he had a deal. So I knew him around that time when he had Dope Boys in the Trap. And he didn't really pop till trap music. So I met him through that. I met him just passing by doing shows, and then he used to come to the, um, Uptown at, at when we used to do um, Sunday Night with Nard. So I met him through that. So 
in between all that, we just used to text through Sidekick and shit like that. There, then, then once he got trap music, he blew up. Mm. You know, so we just it was just natural. Like people think it was like like a lot of stuff I did was like, all right, I I'm gonna get with this nigga and this what like they think I blew up from being a hip hop comedian hanging with Tip, but it wasn't that. It was just we was friends and it's just organic. If anything, it was Clay through all that honestly, because whenever Clay. we did shows, Clay would put me on the host of um, the concerts. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I he just said make sure you're there. I made sure I was there and I did them. You know what I'm saying? It just organically happened. So that's how that happened. Yeah, because you was in all the music videos oh. at one oh. at one point in time. That's because Atlanta was hot at the time, and yeah. I was here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it was organically happening. It was just like I was I was the young comedian, and like like even with Ludacris, Ludacris used to host used to, used to be on the radio, so he a host mm -hmm. the um First level level every every. Tuesday or Wednesday a host the Tuesday went the radio person the host and he used to be there so naturally you just meet people and through that and that's how we became cool so it was just a natural thing at that time everybody Atlanta was bubbling at the time you know 106 and Park was popping so Atlanta had 106 and Park on, on lock and I was on all the videos <laughs> it looked you know, strategic because I was like man how is he in every video because I was where it was at. It's just like now. It's just like if you're on social media right now, if you're in the mix of when everybody was bubbling, you just naturally in it. Yeah, You know true. what I'm saying? And if you know what you're doing while you're in it, you under, I just understood where I was. Mm -hmm. And I capitalized on it. Same thing with social media. I understood off the beginning what it was, and I just took advantage of it at the time and understood. And I just and that, right now, I, I reap the benefits off just being grandfathered in. I know you're super cool with Charlemagne. How did you guys get cool? Social media. I met Same him thing? on tw uh, no MySpace. I I just MySpace? met him MySpace. Yeah, I DM'd him or uh, whatever was back then. We I was like, cause he was on um, Ozone magazine. I was on o Ozone magazine. I did ten things I'm hating on. He had another little thing, and so I hit him up. I was like, man, I fuck with you. Woo -woo. I was like, we need to link up and do skits. We, I used to fly up to New York. I flew up to New York, did the skits, and that was before skits was popping. We was the one, the first one. If you, the good thing about social media, you can look at all the time yeah, stamps. You can document yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everything. we was really the first ones to do all them shit. So we started doing. That's how we built. And I think the good thing was I never wanted to be what he wanted to be, and he never wanted to be what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and see, the difference is now everything is focused on media. Yeah. So now media is popular. I don't give a fuck about media. <laughs> and that's why I hate doing these podcasts. Yeah. But that's where all the yeah. that's where it's, that's where we done yeah. that's evolved to, evolved yeah. to now. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's worked out perfect for it in his world. And see, it looks like it's, but that's really what he was already. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He's always been a media person. It's just the industry has moved on to that. So it's. It's just been natural. We've always, we still cool to this day. I don't want to do what the fuck he do. He don't want to do what I do. It's just the industry has moved to that, so. And they get to hear you every day on Donkey the other day because he got you in the drop. For real? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I don't be, I talk to this nigga every day. I don't keep up with what he doing. We just talk as friends. You right. see what I'm that's, saying? That's, 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 right. that's yeah. And that's all we, oh, he, has, he, has, he has vent to me about some shit that happened in there and I, he, I vent to him some shit. We friends, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't, I don't ask him for shit. He don't ask me for shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, listen, that's how friendship's supposed to be, right? That's what I thought. But I mean, in this industry, like if you if you can't use your friends, it's used. But I don't see it like that. Mm. And, you know, I like having friends that we ain't, cause I, we weren't built off of that. You know what I'm saying? We, even though actually, I guess we was, but we really wasn't because we just organically did shit. So, Cause y'all real friends, like not industry friends. I think that's kind of what you're yeah, trying to explain. Yeah, I'm a bad person to ask about how to get, how to do shit because I do shit organically. Mm -hmm. Everything I've done in my career, I've actually did because I want to do. I move by my own drum, so I'm the wrong person to ask when it comes to how to make it. Because mm -hmm. if you go by me, you probably gonna fuck up because I'm just doing what I want to do. Or you probably, you probably just not gonna make it. You might not because I mean, <laughs> if you go by, actually, you could if you if you follow my by by my what's the word ideologies of life because I don't move by business. I move by being a genuine person. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You might not make it a billionaire, but you're gonna be happy in life. 
Yeah, you know now, what I'm I know saying? So, we was talking off camera uh, about like how the new generation of comedians, it, like everybody just doing anything to make it. And, you know, like, what's some advice you would, like, really give people? Like, if they really I ain't got no to... advice for these niggas. You know, I, don't, <laughs> I, just, I mean, I, I think we ask for too much advice because we looking for shit, like words to change shit. Yeah. You just follow, like, everybody I looked up to, I didn't really meet them. I just paid attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the people I looked up to, my first people looking up to, was Deion Sanders because he was from Florida. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just I identify the same way I was saying I put a little Duval to make people identify. I identify with him because he was from a Florida nigga and you know what I'm saying? He ain't, I couldn't play no fucking football but it's just the fact that he was from there. You know what I'm saying? Gave so, you hope. Yeah, it just gave me hope and I didn't, I didn't meet him until I became somebody. You know what I'm saying? But, but it just, it, it gave, and instilled with me. I didn't, he didn't tell me, all right, do this, do that. It's just I watched. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, just watch. You don't go by Because it's it. probably annoying, right? Like a lot of comedians, they I don't mind it. it. You know what I'm saying? Because what's they used to do that? Andrew Schultz. He used to aggravate the shit out of me about it. <laughs> That's why I say, if you want something, you got to have to pull it out of me. Right. And it's got to be people I give a fuck about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like s certain people shouldn't get certain shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I am a fan of you on social media because you don't give a damn. I do, but I... Do you? No. I, I, don't I don't think don't you care. don't. I do care. I care. I, I, I just... Because you, you're freely typing. You're freely... I, I do. feel like that's where your advice is in the tweets. Those, yeah. are, those are very good yeah. sound I just say something went viral. I got to But I see, I say, I say... But see, <laughs> no, I come no, from no. an era of... I come <laughs> from an era of social media where you say what's on your mind. It's not like a... Like, I'm not making a press release. Now it's a press release, everything you say. <laughs> so when I'm talking, I'm just saying what's on my mind. I'm not saying it's facts. You know what I'm saying? It's just this was on my mind. Mm -hmm. This is how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> but now we take it as these effects. This is you heard what Duval said. He said, he said, um, Yo stuff always going viral. Yo shit going viral. Yo do you stuff even know? Do you viral. even know? You just long, I don't know like, what, what y'all gonna be offended by till y'all get offended. <laughs> or, do, or do your team like <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. Now I don't care if you get offended. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. I'm not saying, all right, this going to really piss them off. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless, unless I'm just doing it just to be an asshole and it's just some some non-threatening type shit. But mm -hmm. it's never like I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm finna, I'm finna go, go viral. <laughs> Like I'm not the nigga that asks about how to go viral because I really don't know. I mean, you do viral stuff. You do the. Are you still doing the auntie of the? Uh, auntie I had of the week? to stop doing that because they started banning it because niggas started hating. Auntie of the week. Auntie yeah, the like week. somehow. Wait, they was banning it. Yeah, man. People you be, was posting some fine aunties. Too. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that shit be that shit was lit, nigga. They they was banning them motherfuckers, but. I do stuff like for the ecosystem for us, you know what I'm saying? Like when I do stuff, like my page is mostly for for all of us, you know what I'm saying? Not just. I, when I say all of them, I'm not just saying like niggas. It's just an ecosystem of people that grew up around what what that can identify with what I'm going through. Conversations mm -hmm. with Unc. Yeah, conversations with Unc. Like the, the podcast that I'm doing that I really don't, didn't want to do. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, you talking about you don't like media. Yeah you, yeah. yeah, you don't like media, so why are you doing it? Shit, they are you trying to get me Were you doing? coerced into it? I mean, it's kind of like the people that you trust. They keep wanting me to do it, so I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm you saying? I like, make some money off it because you like got fans. Like Charlemagne, them they've been Charlemagne been trying to get me to do podcasts since he been doing Brilliant Idiots, yeah. which I don't know how long that's been. That's been since that's been the a podcast long time. first started. Yeah, so they've time. been trying to get me to do it, but like that's his lane. You see, yeah. like I said, that's the media lane. That's never been my lane. But he been trying to get me to do it. But now, 10, 15 years from now, everybody doing it. Now I don't want to do it because everybody, everybody doing, doing it. it. Yep. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. what I'm saying? Like yep. I want the people, if everybody doing it, I don't want to do it. But they keep forcing me to do it. So they finally got me to do it while I was laying on my back and I couldn't do shit else and I was hurt. So it was him and, well, Clay actually talked me into doing it. So I was like, all right, if I do, I do it with you. It'll be me and Clay. It was supposed to be me and Clay. Mm -hmm. And then we got the check from them niggas, then he died. <laughs> and, oh, then, and then, so now I'm doing it because it's out of respect of my nigga Clay mm -hmm. and them. Because they could have been took the money back, you know what I'm saying? So, but at the same time, that's what happens when you do shit with people that you fuck with, like with Dolly and, and Charlemagne and them. So I'm just doing it just out of respect, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I, and it actually I feel like they give me a chance to do it how I want to do it, you know what I'm saying? So it's just conversations and it's understanding and just let people pick my brain, you know, so. And you said you got hurt. For people who don't know, you actually got hit by a car. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got hit by a car. How'd you get hit by a car? The car hit me. 
Oh. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> the motherfucker hit me from the back while I was in the Bahamas. Motherfucker, the uh, lady hit me. You have Damn. a lot of near death experiences. Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of them. I be scared when you be posting your plane. I ain't gonna lie. Why? Because it just looked like. It's just one win away from it just oh, never coming yo, back. Yo. But why? Oh, my God. I, I'm glad he's saying it because this is why we're ignorant as a people because mm-hmm. we don't know. But, but listen, all right. So the first time I ever flew private, right? Right. I was like. I Where did you fly? Uh, a jet? Yeah, a jet? yeah, it was, yeah, it was a jet. Uh-huh. But I was like, I was like, how do people brag about it? I was like, I don't like this because it was like the turbulence. I don't know. Maybe cause, you I know, feel like it's more turbulence in the commercial flights. I've had more turbulence. See, with me, I don't fly unless I see the weather perfect. But, <laughs> okay, okay. So I don't catch okay. too much turbulence. Like uh-huh. I do, but I don't. Not as much as I do on the on Because you can kind of tell your pilots, like, yo, go this way to avoid this weather. Yeah, you pers- can see the weather on the on your... I got an app right now. I check the weather all the time, you know, called Fourth Flight. All the, everybody in aviation use it. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I do it, too. That's one of the things I do, too, to open our eyes up to understand the aviation because we really lost. In yeah, this. we really, we really don't, don't know. Because the shit been going on for hundreds of years. When when planes invented. Yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? 18, so, I mean, 18, and how many 18, niggas y'all know really got a plane for real? I don't know anybody. That's my point. And we <laughs> should know because now it's evolving to where planes can damn near fly themselves now. Mm-hmm. So, we going to be handicapped like why people, you know, how people have to catch the bus now, rely on the bus. If you can't fly in certain shit, you can't do certain shit. So, I mean, we should get into it. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, it ain't for everybody, but in my business, it makes sense for me because mm-hmm. I travel for a living. So it made sense for me to get a plane. Yeah, and I always see in the comments like people always be like, "You're not scared being on that little plane and stuff like that." I mean, that's what that's, that's what they used to say. But after a while, like I've been flying for like six years now, so over time now they starting to more people are into aviation now just from watching people like me and other people like my man Mel, Mel the traveler. He does acrobatic, uh, aerobatic. I don't want to say it wrong. He probably. It's probably a right or wrong way to say it, but he make the planes flip and do all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So when you see people that look like you do it, you end up doing stuff like that. Yeah. So that's the only reason. That's the, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I show it more on my page. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like when you post posting content like that because it, it gives us a... You are what you see. You have, you have one of the rare things that uh, a lot of comedians don't have, a number one Billboard single. Yeah. That shit was big. Now, when you recorded that record, smile, I could tell. Living my smile, best life for the living audience. Living my best life, my bad. Yeah, smile. Uh, I could tell, and correct me if I'm wrong, you just had a good ass time recording that shit. Yeah, I mean, but I always have good times. All my songs come from something I'm doing or a joke. So that yeah. song came from a joke for me saying, smile, bitch, on, on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I built it off of that. So, and I've always, like I said, I understood how social media was, and I understood how I was other songs I was making big just from being me. So I knew if I could make these songs big, I could do the same thing with me. You know what I'm saying? So before that, I did Killing with the Shoulders. You know Killing what I'm with the Shoulders. And I did that with Snoop. With Snoop, one time you know with Snoop. What I'm saying? So I like how that, you put Ball Greasy on there. And Ball Greasy. Mm-hmm. So once I did, once I did that, I was like, oh yeah, this next shit. But I didn't know it was going to do as big as it was going to do. Man, when I do something, huge. I do it for like a joke. So yeah. when I go on my shows, I could just put it in my show. So to me, that's a, a win for it all. Mm-hmm. And so when I did it, I did it for that. And I was like, oh, no, nah, this shit going to hit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I thought it was just going to hit for like all my fans and all that. But then when I posted and I started seeing a the thing, then I started seeing how it was going. I was like, oh, no. Nah. This shit finna change the world. Did that <laughs> shit? Did my bad to curse, but did that change some things for you? Because uh, music, you were putting music out, but never to this level before. It changed in a way. And but a number it didn't. one Billboard is really your visit. That, that in price a way went up. Did, no, because I was already making money before that. Okay, honestly, it kind of because people people don't know this. I ain't made a dime from that song. What? What? Yeah, like they, I ain't made a dime from that song yet, so it ain't like. Why? I mean, not as far as from the record, you know what I'm saying? Why? Like, because okay. it was a sample. Well, that too, but it was a lot of other stuff that I don't feel like talking about right okay, now. But gotcha. 
Cause I don't feel like flexing on a nigga right now. <laughs> oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> what made you chop off your infamous dreads? Cause you had those for a while. This was a headache. Them bitches had them bitches had a vein going through my head. <laughs> bitches were heavier than a motherfucker, man. So I cut them bitches off. Listen, like, but you know, to cut off dreads is a it's an experience. You got to say, nah, I don't want this shit no more. Cause it take you a long time to get them to the length. It ain't matter to me. You ain't get down. But, but you know, you know what though, you you um. It worked out good for you because some people would cut their dreads and then they just lose all their hair. Yeah, I did it way before that. I was still young. I did it when, <laughs> <laughs> when my daughter was like two. So, okay. yeah, one or two, yeah. Yeah, because I done seen some people in the hood like, man, how you just, you just had dreads now? Now, that was over time. Like, because most people, when you catch me, like, say, for instance, I don't know how old are y'all, but like, if you was in your 30s, you probably caught me when I had dreads. Mm -hmm. And you start living life. The next thing you know, you see me without dreads, you like, hold up, I thought he had dreads. So, but in that midst of time, I, that's been 10 years. So, yeah. you'll see when 10 years down the line, people still thinking about you from 10 years from now. Nah, you're right about that. So, who would you say, who would you say your, your top comedians are right now, like in the game? Or do you even care? I don't care, bro. I don't care, but um, I go <laughs> with it. Um, Jay Ski. Uh, money bag mafia. Uh, Time to tip them. Yeah. Uh, who else? The top. I'm trying to think of people that I I know funny but don't get enough looks. Gotcha. Um, JJ Williamson. That's a that's one of the funniest niggas that people don't know. JJ Williamson. Yeah. Okay. He he on the radio out there in Dallas. Okay. With Didi in the morning. Okay. <sighs> I wish you would have told me you was gonna ask me this before this. Uh, who mm -hmm. else? Erica Duchess. I'm time for Duchess. Yeah, yeah and Nav show. Green. Nah, that's my boy. Yeah, I like I like Nav. Yeah. Nav funny. Now I do want to talk about something kind of deep because that was my guy too. Okay. Uh, we lost we lost our guy Clay. Yeah. Uh, I've I've known Clay for a very long time. Um, but I know that I know that hit you hard too because mm -hmm. was he your day to day manager? He was more than my manager. He was like my older brother. Okay. Mm. So. A lot of people lost business stuff, but I lost like an older brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Clay was a good guy, man. Like, it's hard to find people like that in this business. You know what I mean? I said all the time, like, when you find genuine people, like, you got to keep them close because mm -hmm. you know how this business are. Everybody act like they want to be your friends or act like they want to help you and stuff like that. And it's just, it's really rare to find good people in this business. Yeah, it is. But he was one of the good ones. So mm -hmm. that's why, that's what, but the good thing about it, I never took him for granted. So okay. and I always gave him his flowers while he was here. So that's how you got to never take nobody you love for granted. Right. I like that. We the ones tour yep. you're on right now. Yep, all of us on that bitch. We showing how comedians can do their thing and show love and kill that bitch all in one. It's more than a comedy show. It's like a comedy concert. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, a comedy co a, par a comedy party. How'd you get the call for that? It's something we always had in the in the making since like the um, the promoter I've been doing business with for like years. You know what I'm saying? He a little younger than me, but he always been doing this thing. So round when round when Smile Bitch came along, we had an idea. He was like, yeah, we're going to do something, be the next wave. You know what I'm saying? And so it just evolved into this. And I mean, it, it took a time because we're 2020 and all that stuff there. Then I got hit by a car. So it took a time, but now it's finally here. And we've been selling out everywhere, and it's been great. Everybody getting along backstage. Yeah, we having a great time. Like, <laughs> Any, anybody be. scared to uh to, to go on after certain people? I was going to say, is people <laughs> scared to go on after you? No, actually, they ain't. It's like, because honestly, I'm supposed to be going last. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's really me, honestly. But but they all they don't go they don't hesitate to go up after me and like if I do have to go last like we rotate honestly gotcha. like okay. certain cities I do last like in Florida there's no way not, not, they're not you gotta gonna, go last you know what I'm you saying but like certain certain times in certain cities I go last but if they go last like we have to, the main thing is staying on time mm, okay. staying your time because no matter how funny you are if you go over your time it's after if it's six of us, it's gonna be like three hours. So the last nigga gonna it's gonna be a long time. So you wanna respect your time. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly the person that takes the longest is probably me. On so, stage. Yeah, so I, I be taking the L <laughs> sometimes. Like I tell him I'm sorry. And shout out to D Ray, cause D Ray he headlined a lot. And that's he my don't god, get, man. D Ray a funny yeah. motherfucker too. D Ray, D -Ray is props. hilarious. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's he one of the greats for real. Like yes. like joke for joke. Ain't too many people fucking with D-Ray. So for D-Ray to go last after all of us and just for anybody to go after me, 
it's a lot because I do music, comedy, mm-hmm. I do it all. You out there performing? Yeah, I, I tap dance. You do know you think there's any another comedian that can go joke for joke for you in the ranking section? Section? I don't rank like that no more. I don't even have like a. I don't really think about it like that because. Okay. So you're de- you're deactivated. You're deactivated in that in that area. I just do what I do, man. I don't like honestly. I pull back a lot because. I be feel like I can hurt people's feelings. Right? <laughs> so I like I like to pull back. Like a lot of times, I spell niggas for real, man. Cause I'm an older nigga, so a lot of stuff that don't hurt me can kind of make another motherfucker like get on the ledge or something. So I Damn. I let people I let people talk shit. I give people jokes to give on me. I do it all the time, especially on social media. So I don't I don't care what you say about me. Mm-hmm. Okay? You know what I'm saying? So I have to be conscious of what I say about other people. Because I was going to ask you this. That was going to be my next question. Do you care about what people say about you? Because no, when you really go viral, don't. sometimes in a negative way, I really don't. the I ladies be, be going enough. crazy sometimes. Sometimes they I don't take it personal with the women because okay. I know they don't get it. But I feel like you got a lot of female fans, though. I do. I tell <laughs> That's people the this funny. all the time. They'll turn, they'll turn on you in the I tell people this all the time. My, my biggest haters be black women, but my biggest supporters is black women. Okay. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they the ones show me the most love. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's just okay. women being women. Do you read? Do you read the comments sometimes? Or? Yeah, but they be entertaining <laughs> to me. Okay, like okay. it takes a lot. It takes everybody. It takes other people to tell me like, man, you need to delete that or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like like it's Robin or or maybe Clay used to like Charlemagne. Does he ever tell you to delete it? Nah, Charlemagne be the one putting the battery in your back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, Damn, so yeah okay. shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like me, I don't be like I said. I don't know what they're offended by until like it'd be like two, three hours later. And I'm looking <laughs> at my name. I'm like, what the fuck? Like they mad at? And it don't be hitting me like that because they read it. You gotta think when you reading something, you reading in your in your mind, not in my mind. Mm-hmm. So or uh, like if you having a bad day and you and your man and got in an argument and, and then he's a little Duval on yeah, the timeline. Yeah, I don't talking about bitches ain't shit. This nigga ain't shit. Yeah, this motherfucker calling us bitch. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you take it personal, but so I don't never. I haven't been on there longer than anybody. I can show you my page right now. I get death threats. I get everything. None of that shit bothered me. I might be. People be sending you death threats? I done got death threats longer than y'all. How old are you? 30. Yeah. How long? How long? <laughs> uh, no way. How long? Hold, let me see when Wait, there, wait there's, there's no way you've been getting death threats Shh. that long. Shit. You say 30? <laughs> Since you've been about 10, at least. Since maybe 2005. <laughs> yeah. And death threats and then. Yeah, but I don't take it like, like I don't know. I, maybe because I'm older, so I always looked at social media. That's why it was hard for me to understand cyberbullying. I'm like, how can you be mad? How can this person bully you? On the internet. From, from a device. Yeah, I never understood that. Now I get it because people in their head more so than I am. So, but. It's never bothered me. I've never got knocked off my square on social media. I do want to ask you, because, you know, you're just like a ball of energy. You always energize the people and stuff like that. But I know sometimes Lil Duval may have a bad day. No, I don't never have You'll a never day. have a bad day? Never do you have ever, a bad day. Does, does anything no. stress you or anything nope. like that? No. Well, okay. Answer this then. How, what's the mental space that you're in to be like that? come from programming i program myself like this over time you know that's why i say this conversations we just talking to our ass catch fire it's what you do every day is who who you are you know we all are creatures of habit so by me every day over time i progressed into the person that y'all see right now mm-hmm. so whoever you trying to be you got to progress into that strategically and understand your programming understand the programming that you are already in and reprogram it, you know what I'm saying, and and un- and be re- real with yourself and know, like I didn't start getting smart till I accepted how dumb I was. Mm. So once you accept how dumb you are, you you move forward because you know uh, I can't, I can only get better, you know. So mm. wow, I, pre- I appreciate you spending some time. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. you for stopping by. Yo, I got I got another question too. So <laughs> how did you get this plane? I bought it. When did you buy it? I bought, well, this my, I got three planes. You got three planes? Yeah. I bought my first plane. I landed, as soon as I landed in PDK, that bitch cut off. Whoa. Do you fly your own plane? Yeah, I do. Well, I haven't lately because 
I got a pile and I, like I said I just getting back on the road get back on my feet and shit like that and my, my flight instruct crashed and died so that was another I got a life but I just it's a whole nother story but anyway so my my uh, my uh what happened was I learned through I learned through my first plane just understanding like how I learned to just put my going ahead first so I bought a plane learned about planes then got a found a pilot and he taught me a lot. My guy Blaine, shout out to Blaine now. He works for a private company or whatever. And so through that, I just learned. And over time, as I learned, I started sharing. Then I bought another plane. Then I started getting addicted to them bitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I had to slow down. So I bought a seaplane. And then I got hit by a car. Mm. What's a, what's a what's seaplane? A seaplane? A plane that lands in the water. Oh, oh. C plan. I'm thinking yeah. the letter C. Plan. Yeah, I, that's what. I, that's what. I, <laughs> see, that's why I'm saying this is educational. Yeah, you know I what I mean? Know like, about that. I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm like, man, like he has a plane, and you can see all these people on the internet talking about all this money they making. Everything I'm talking about now is the same way I used to talk about social media 20 years ago, and everybody was like, what? Uh? So that's what I'm saying. It's just like you once you understand what it is, you can, you can, you can finesse this whole system in life. Mm. Mm. You just got to understand it first. If you look around us every day, shit going on. Yeah. Only people fucked up is our industry, the entertainment industry. The world, Atlanta's still popping. Why? Huh? Why is ours messed up the most? Because we was leaning on it so much and took it for granted, I think. Mm. We mm. took it for granted instead of e- using it as an ecosystem because we was really doing great. But we so busy chasing this over here that we said, fuck this. And now that this is nothing no more, we done left this just like just like segregation. You know what I'm saying? We did the same thing with this this entertainment shit. So now it's out of our arms reach, but it's too late now for this generation. We're so glad that you're here still. You know to share these stories, even though I know you're reluctant. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, thank I, you, I see, man. I see, I see, like we really do got to pry stuff out of you because yeah. you got a no, lot of knowledge. When, no. is, when is the book coming? Do you are you ever gonna write one? Or me and Charlamagne was just talking about that, but like I probably will later. Yeah, you need to, man. It's just it's just needed for the culture. Well, we appreciate you stopping by the Ball Alert yeah, Show. Yeah, Before yeah, we get yeah, out of yeah. here, we do have a pep talk. What's up, Ball Alert? This your boy Lil Duval, Robin. I'm here, and yeah, my pep talk is. Um, if at first you don't succeed, quit. It ain't for you.